Hello lovelies, welcome to Sela G, darlings! Today we are, we are drinking today, yes, bubbles. Mm. I do love bubbles, don't you? Today we are going to be making fondue. Now, cheese fondue, darlings. Cheese fondue, not chocolate fondue, please, please. Mm. Cheese. We love cheese. It's winter. It's lumpy sweater season. Nobody will know if we have back rolls. So indulge. Have fun. It goes straight into your heart in a good way. I hope. Anyways, people tend to make fondue with white wine, but I said, no ma'am. I'm going to make it with bubbles. Now I can't claim that as an original idea from me. This is from a time where I was living in Switzerland and I had the best fondue with my, of my life and I had it with champagne. So I am on a bit of a budget, so I did a Prosecco-based fondue, but I really, really hope you like it and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do for our fondue is get our three cheeses. So my recipe usually only calls for half a pound of uh, Gruyere and half a pound of Swiss cheese, but in this case I decided to add a little bit under of a quarter of a pound of Fontina cheese just to add another layer of flavor. I have small potatoes which I will be using as a dip included with bread and some charcuterie that I'm going to show you in a bit. Nutmeg, I have two tablespoons of cornstarch, one large tablespoon of grainy mustard, you can also use Dijon and one spoon of lemon juice. I also have a whole clove of garlic that I am going to crush and use to coat my fondue pan so that it's rich in flavor. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is we are going to cut the wax of all of our cheeses. And then we are going to go ahead, grate them into this bowl, add the cornstarch, and we'll go from there. Alright, so our potatoes are already boiling. We're gonna have them boil for 15 minutes or until they're tender. And I have my clove of garlic already crushed. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to just coat all of my fondue bowl, pan, however you wanna call it, with the juices of the garlic. This will just help your overall base for the fondue be a lot more flavorful, rich, and layered. Now, once I have coated my pan with the garlic. I'm going to remove all the little pieces from here. And I'm gonna bring this to medium heat. Once it's warm, we're going to go ahead and add one cup of our Prosecco. We can lower the temperature a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little splash more because why not? And we're also going to add our one spoon of lemon juice. Once this turns into a very gentle simmer, we're going to start incorporating our cheese little by little. Don't get carried away. You need to have a lot of patience with fondue because if you don't, it will curdle. Once you have that very light simmer going on, bring your temperature down to low. You want a very, very small flame. If you do a high flame, it will curdle as well. I am telling you from experience. So please, the key to this is just the right temperature, almost as at low, very, very small flame, and to take your time incorporating the cheese. Mm -hmm. 
Patience is a virtue. Okay, so we've just incorporated the last of our cheese. And the secret is never to stop turning. And as I told you a moment ago, to please be patient with how fast you add the cheese. You wanna give time for the cheese to incorporate into the mix before you add some more. There was a second there where I thought it might curdle, so I just started going crazy on the on the spinning, but look at this. Isn't that beautiful? All right, now we're just going to add the stuff to the fondue that just makes the flavor amazing. It's a, it's a combination of everything, your cheeses and your seasonings. So I'm gonna do a pinch of nutmeg. I'm gonna do two of the spoons of grainy mustard. You can even add just a little more so that we have some delicious flavors in there. We're gonna do one quarter of an ounce of sherry. And we're gonna do one quarter of an ounce of cognac. Maybe we could do a little bit more cognac just to add some more flavor to it, okay? So after this, we gently incorporate, oh, this smells amazing. We incorporate all of this into our fondue. You wanna really swirl it. You don't want it to curdle now. You've gone this far and gotten this to look this perfect. And this will also soften your fondue a little bit because by the time that I finished incorporating all the cheese, it was a little thick. So this will make it just a bit easier to add something else. Be careful with fondue because if you explore too much with this guy, it will curdle and all that work will go to the garbage. Don't put it on high flame, leave it as it is and then you can just serve it on your fondue stand table with a couple of tea lights. That's the perfect amount of heat to keep it nice and in its liquid form. Don't do more heat than that. Beautiful. Now look at these beauties. Oh, so excited. There is no great fondue without good bread. So I suggest you go to your local bakery and get whatever catches your eye. I'm just going to slice some of this bread, put it on my, on my oven pan, and then throw it in the oven for 10 minutes at 350, and that will make it just perfect. You might want to get some harder bread so that it's easier to poke. And I will be sharing, um, good wine pairing for sparkling white and red wine on my comments. So don't forget to look at the description of the video. <music> Lastly guys, I recommend you to get some charcuterie for your uh, fondue. It's great to dip in as well. In this case, I got a finocchiona, which is a fennel, a fennel flavored salami and uh, Calabrian pepper-based salami. This one has a really good kick, so I think with the cheese, it's gonna be amazing. And I prefer them in chunks like this because they're easier to pinch and dip in your fondue. Try not to get anything sliced. That's going to be very, very difficult to dip into your fondue and you're not gonna be able to bring it back outside. I hope you enjoy it. We are finished, darlings! I hope you enjoyed making this fondue and uh, enjoy it. It's such a treat in the winter. For me, I hope you enjoyed drinking while you were cooking. And uh, let me know in the comments if there is anything specifically that you would like to cook or that you would like me to make and I would be more than happy to indulge and uh, 
give you whatever content you would like to see. Don't forget to follow me and subscribe. Thank you so much, darlings. Cheers. And that was another Selaji. Mmm. Salud.